exclusive research. It is an original contribution to knowledge because previously research has been done on people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities and for people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. But very limited work has been done on how we do research with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. And that's the gap that this work plugs. work makes an original contribution to the field of inclusive research through presenting a methodology for doing research with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. After the disabled rights movement we witnessed the inclusion of people with physical disabilities and sensory impairments in research but people with intellectual impairments were left behind and the inclusive research movement sought to rectify that situation. I really appreciate Milner and Frawley's distinction of research done on people with disabilities, for people with disabilities, with people with disabilities and by people with disabilities. And when you look at the inclusive research movement in regards to people with mild and moderate intellectual disabilities, we have seen a realisation of that progression. We're no longer just doing research on people or for them. We're doing it collaboratively with them or there are research teams being led by people with intellectual disabilities. But people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities have been left behind in that progress. There's been lots of debate around inclusive research, people questioning whether it's tokenistic or whether it's really meaningful or if the work itself has value. And I think much of that is silenced by the Wormsley, Strudnova and Johnson paper in 2018, where they reviewed 52 inclusive research papers and conclude that there is added value to doing research inclusively. But People have questioned whether it's possible to do that with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. Um, Atkinson and Wormsley in 1999 described them as the lost voices of inclusive research and Morris in 2003 pointed out that unless we actively seek to include them, they will remain excluded and their exclusion from research is part of the construction of the disability they experience. There are other concerns raised about the inclusive research movement, like Lewis um, et al. in 2008 described the, the usual suspect that quite often you find researchers partner with a particular person with an intellectual disability and then train that person up to be a researcher. And so it's not so much that research is being done inclusively with people with intellectual disabilities so much as like very specific people have been included and everybody else is maybe on the margins. I've, I've other worries about it. There's a move sometimes to firm up definitions of what counts as inclusive research, primarily for funding bodies. And in the firming up of those definitions, you can encounter um, definitions that necessarily exclude people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities that require you to do certain things in order to count as inclusive research that somebody with a profound intellectual disability would never be able to do. And so the inclusive research movement is fabulous for the progress that has been made, but there is still a need to make more progress and everybody within the inclusive research movement would recognise that. There is a lot of um, emphasis put on training, how important it is to train people to do research. 
And when I was looking at how I was going to do research with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities, I did explore that and I explored creative approaches like art, you know, theatre, um, photo voice, things like that. But sometimes I found people were claiming to have included people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities when, when you read the paper you weren't so sure that they had. So for example, um, the Chris O'Reilly paper or Perlman paper both say that they are including people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities in the work that they do. And the work that they do is fabulous, but the work that they do requires people to follow verbal instructions or to use symbolic communication and that um, the cognitive ability required to do those things would preclude people with profound intellectual impairment from taking part. Um, but this focus on training worried me because I think inherent in a celebration of training is an underpinning assumption that the person lacks something. That individual with the intellectual disability lacks something and therefore we must train them in order to turn them into a person who is able to do research. But for starters, if I'm working with people with profound intellectual disability, they're not going to be able to access that training. So it's an automatic rule out for me. It's not something I could consider. But I question that start out assumption. You know, is there something missing from the person or is there something missing from how we conduct research? And so I was very focused on reimagining how we do research rather than um, imagining creative ways to adapt the research process such that it meets people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities or incremental ways, you know, tiny little bits of training that would be accessible to people with profound intellectual disabilities to enable them to step up, as it were, and be able to do research. So I was focused on reimagining the research process and only proceeding if we proceeded together. And so I was thinking, I was back to my undergraduate philosophy, I was like, what is, what is research? And in my head, I had it as a systematic process through which we apprehend new meaning. And I figured if I could create or if we could create a way of systematically approaching meaning together and that we might through that then apprehend new meaning, then that would be a research methodology that could encompass people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. And the methodology that I present later in my thesis, the methodology of being with, is that reimagining, and it is my novel contribution to the field of inclusive research. It's quite often inclusive research is described as a journey, and so it makes you think that we, we're going from on to for to with to by, and that linear nature of the journey is something that I question. I don't think there's necessarily a fixed destination at the end of it. I think it's a more dispersed thing. And this work is a movement forward, but it is not the way forward. It's just saying that this is possible. And it's. I hope that it works as an adjutant to the narrative that says it's necessary to exclude people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities from research.